for the 24-valve diesel is the same as that used in the past. Be sure to use only high-quality multi-viscosity oil that is specified in the service manual for diesel-powered Ram trucks. Before we continue our look at the features of this new diesel engine, try answering a review question. Where is the crankshaft position tone wheel located on the new Cummins diesel engine? A. Behind the oil cooler on the right side of the engine. B. On the crankshaft between cylinder numbers 5 and 6. Or C. On the engine block behind the starter. The correct answer is B. The crankshaft position tone wheel is mounted to the crankshaft between cylinders 5 and 6. Probably the biggest change to the Cummins turbo diesel for Ram truck is the all-new 24-valve cylinder head and the related changes to the valve train. The one-piece cylinder head cover is cast aluminum, and integrated color graphics improve the engine's overall appearance. The reusable one-piece gasket for the cylinder head cover makes service easier than the previous six-piece gasket set, and since the gasket is noise-isolated, engine noise is reduced. The cylinder head bolts are now all one length, rather than the three different lengths used on the previous product. This makes service easier and provides more uniform clamping on the head and gasket. Be aware that these bolts are not interchangeable with those from the 12-valve engine. The cylinder head gasket is of a new design that affords improved combustion sealing, and it too is not interchangeable with those used in the past. Another enhancement to the cylinder head is the shape of the exhaust ports, which increases combustion efficiency over earlier designs. The cylinder head has four valves per cylinder, two intake and two exhaust. The valves are smaller than those used on the 12-valve engine, and therefore are not interchangeable with previous valves. The intake and exhaust valves are also not interchangeable. You can identify the new exhaust valves by the small dimple in the center of the valve face. A new rocker arm design that allows for the removal of fuel injectors without disturbing valve lash is another improvement. The cross head enables the rocker arm to open two intake or exhaust valves at the same time. The cross head socket acts as a pivot to allow the cross head to open the valves. The valve train features wider camshaft lobes and tappet faces, as well as longer push rods, all of which help to reduce stress and wear. And since the fuel transfer pump is now electric, the camshaft has no mechanical transfer pump lobe. The camshaft is not interchangeable with any others. A camshaft position sensor, which senses when the number one cylinder is at top dead center, or TDC, is now mounted in the former TDC pin location. You'll also find a TDC indicator stamped on the outside of the gear housing cover. A new thermostat is found on the 24-valve cylinder head, and this component is not interchangeable with its predecessor. The thermostat is vertically mounted in the housing that is integrated with the cylinder head. That winds up the new items on the 24-valve cylinder head. Let's move on to the fuel system. The fuel injectors are located under the cylinder head cover between the rocker levers. They are secured with a hold-down clamp, cap screw, and shoulder bolt. The shoulder bolt should not be loosened when removing an injector. The fuel injectors operate at 4,500 PSI pop-off pressure. Previously, the operating pressure was 3,600 PSI. Fuel is routed through the high-pressure fuel line inside the head and through connector tubes to the injectors, where the fuel enters the injector from the side, different from the previous top entry. A new O-ring seal on the fuel injector body keeps engine oil out of the injector, and it keeps fuel out of the oil. A single 1.5 millimeter copper gasket or shim between the injector and the head is used with all 24 valve applications. This gasket should be replaced any time an injector is removed. It's important to remember that these fuel injectors are not in any way serviceable, and they are not interchangeable with any previous injectors. A major change to the fuel system is the switch from offset injection to centered injection, which provides many benefits. 
By locating the fuel injector in the center of the cylinder, the result is a more even fuel pattern on the top of the piston, which improves combustion. A centered injection system also helps equalize the temperature of the piston's ring pack, improving durability of the rings. Other benefits to the centered injection system are reduced oil consumption, reduced oxides of nitrogen emissions, and the elimination of a catalyst and an exhaust gas recirculation system on vehicles equipped with a California emissions package. Moving on, there is now a fuel return rifle bored through the cylinder head, which returns excess fuel from the injectors to the fuel tank. Next on the list of what's new in the fuel system is the Bosch BP44 fuel injection pump. As with the previous pump, a gear train in the front of the engine drives the injection pump at half the engine speed. The pump is mounted in a fixed position through an offset numbered key. The number on the key must match the three-digit number on each pump. Previous injection pump mount keys, where used, were not specific. An arrow stamped into the top of the key should always face the pump. If it's installed backwards, a DTC may be set. When installing one of these injection pumps, be sure to have the keyway at the 12 o'clock position to prevent the key from falling into the gear train. There are no adjustments to make to the pump drive. And the injection pump itself is not serviceable. If faulty, replace it as an assembly. The injection pump employs a radial piston design to build high fuel pressure and delivers finely atomized fuel to aid combustion. Two solenoids determine the timing and amount of fuel that is sent to the injectors. At this point, we need to look at the electronic controls for the fuel and air intake systems for the new Cummins engine. The electronic control system is all new and relies on two different electronic modules. Attached to the pump is a fuel injection pump control module, which is wired through a 9-pin connector. The pump control module receives signals from an engine control module, or ECM. It is through these signals that the injection pump control module operates the solenoids that meter and time fuel delivery. Designed by Cummins, the ECM is mounted to the driver's side of the engine behind the fuel filter. Both the fuel injection pump control module and the engine control module are compliant with a second generation of onboard diagnostics, or OBD2. The ECM communicates with the fuel injection pump control module over a two-wire data bus that is different from the CCD data bus. However, the ECM also communicates with the vehicle's PCM over the CCD data bus. The ECM uses information from its inputs for fuel system control, such as the non-adjustable electronic governor, which was previously mechanically controlled. Refer to this month's reference book for a complete list of inputs to the ECM. Among these inputs to the ECM is the accelerator pedal position sensor, or APPS, which is similar to a throttle position sensor. This six-wire component provides throttle angle data and handles the idle on-off functions. By the way, don't adjust the idle stop screws on the 24-valve Cummins diesel. They are preset at the factory. The APPS is mounted to the back of another new item, the bell crank assembly. You shouldn't adjust the accelerator pedal position sensor, which is calibrated to its mounting bracket. If faulty, replace the entire bell crank assembly. The bell crank assembly serves as a junction point for the accelerator pedal linkage, the speed control servo cable linkage, and the transmission throttle valve cable linkage.